For hundreds of years, the name Medici has been linked with power, influence, and support for the arts. This family started from modest beginnings and became one of the most important and long-lasting families in history. They went from being bankers to grand dukes, and their story is a part of how Europe changed from the olden times to the modern world. However, their journey wasn't always easy. The Medici family faced political tricks, rivalries, and tough challenges that tested their strength. Welcome to the Medici family. How did their dominance in Florence begin? Ardingo de' Medici was the first member of the family to hold high positions in the government. In 1314, another individual elected as gonfalonier was Averardo, who happened to be the grandfather of Giovanni di Bici de' Medici, who later went on to become the founder of the Medici Bank. But shortly after these successes, the Medici family lost their political and economic power in Florence. In Florence, there were many families that would often engage in violent competition with each other, both economically and politically. As a result of this rivalry, families sometimes increase their positions, occasionally lose their standings, and even some families would lose all significance of their surnames. That's why Giovanni had a cautious character. Giovanni di Bici de' Medici inherited a handful from his father. The absence of his wealthy birth compelled him to strive to safeguard his ever-expanding banking enterprise amidst hostilities with rival families. He grew up as a competent merchant while assisting with family business alongside his merchant father, and he also analyzed the social structure of Florence effectively. During this period, it was not possible for a person to become rich in Florence without sharing his wealth with the Republic. He was smart enough to share his wealth with the state and not be ambitious in political life. His cautious character was the reason for his success. Making dangerous breakthroughs in political life was not in his character. He deliberately avoided public life, preferring a simple. He wasted his most time in family and business. Despite possessing these qualities, he had to reluctantly engage in political life to further develop and secure his banking activities. So Giovanni reluctantly accepted office as one of the priori in the Signoria in 1402, in 1408 and again in 1411, and in 1421 he generously contributed to both public funds and private charities, while also investing in land across the surrounding countryside. Also during this period, Giovanni de' Medici was a member of the Priori of the Arts, this membership brought many benefits to Giovanni de' Medici in his business life. In 1422, there were two million golden florins in circulation and 72 bankers and bill brokers in the Florence of Republic. One of the most prosperous and certainly the most rapidly expanding of these businesses was that of the Medici. There were branches in Venice and Genoa, Naples and Gaeta and Rome. The branches were governed by members of the Medici family, with a representative from the Medici family present in each branch's location. The largest of these branches was managed by Vieri di Cambio de' Medici, the cousin of Giovanni de' Medici in Rome. Despite Vieri di Cambio de' Medici being wealthier than Giovanni, after Vieri's untimely death, the branch in Rome was handed over to Giovanni. This gave Giovanni the opportunity to establish a connection with the Papaci, the Pope, as the head of the Roman Catholic Church, held significant religious authority. The Pope's authority extended over religious matters, doctrine, and the governance of the Church. Having strong relationships with the papacy was a significant opportunity for a banker. The greatest wealth in Italy was under the control of the papacy. In 1414, with the support of the Medici family, John Lasarti III was elected as the Pope. 
Giovanni paid 10,000 ducats to John to become his financial advisor and manage the treasure. During this period, Giovanni consistently expanded his wealth through the management of the treasure's revenues. However, prominent families in Florence, who had previously served as financial agents for the Pope, began to feel uneasy due to the friendship between the Medici family and the Pope. They began to spread rumors about Pope John's. And result of these rumors, Pope John found himself accused of all kinds of crimes, including the murder by poison previous Pope and the seduction of the ladies of Bologna. Accompanied by accusations, Pope John XXIII was deposed and imprisoned. After spending three years in prison, Giovanni de' Medici paid a ransom and arranged for him to have a comfortable residence in Florence, where he lived until the end of his days. In fact, this marked the beginning of the generous acts the Medici family would undertake to support their allies. One of the most significant lessons Giovanni de' Medici gave to his children was the willingness to spare no expense for their friends. If one were to draw a modern-day parallel to the Medici family, it would undoubtedly be the godfather. You spend time with your family? Sure I do. Good. Because a man who doesn't spend time with his family can never be a real man. Much like in The Godfather, Giovanni de' Medici lived for his friends and family. Relationships held greater value for the Medici family than mere wealth. Also, a comparable analogy can be drawn between the relationship of Cosimo de' Medici and his father Giovanni and that of The Godfather and his son. Giovanni prioritized giving Cosimo a well-rounded education. This education far surpassed what a merchant family's child would typically receive. The education required for a merchant's son, who would eventually take over the family business, did not align with such educational pursuits. However, Giovanni de' Medici, a classicist himself, valued education and ensured Cosimo received it. Cosimo learned German, French, Latin, Greek, and Arabic at the school. He later received instruction from renowned educators of the time, such as Roberto de Rossi. During this time, he grew a deep fondness for learning about the ancient Greeks. Alongside his mastery in commerce and human relations, he also emerged as one of the country's foremost intellectuals. This quality of his contributed to the growth of classical education in Florence and helped make Florence a center of Western enlightenment. It was Cosimo de' Medici who took over the family business after the death of Giovanni de' Medici. However, before Cosimo established his cultural and political dominance over Florence, he had to overcome a series of challenges. In the year 1421, before Cosimo took the reins, the prominent Albizi family seized control of the state administration. In the history of Florence, perhaps after the Medicis, a strong family rule and a period of pressure over the government began. The Albizi family established their tyranny over Florence. During the era of the Albizi family, the territories of Florence expanded increasingly. Additionally, under the rule of the Albizi family, Florence acquired Pisa and gained control of a port. The capture of this port facilitated Florence's exports and imports with European countries. As a result, a significant influx of wealth began flowing into Florence. As the popularity of the Albizi family grew, so did their power. They used this opportunity to exert pressure on other influential families within Florence. In 1432, after Giovanni de' Medici's death, Rinaldo degli Albizi embarked on an anti-Medici plot in an attempt to weaken the Medici family's influence in Florence and undermine their wealth. Having held dominance in Florentine politics for a decade, Rinaldo believed that someone relatively inexperienced like Cosimo would be an easy target. Rinaldo degli Albizi's ultimate goal was to tarnish the growing reputation of the Medici family across Italy and, in turn, establish influence within the papal treasury. Amidst the swirling rumors in the city, Cosimo decided to distance himself. He retreated to his estate at Il Trebio in Mugello, spending the majority of his time there. While Cosimo was away in the country, Rinaldo degli Albizzi set about manipulating the elections to the new Signoria, which was due to meet in September. He completed the work with unobtrusive skill. 
Of the nine Priori chosen, seven were definitely prepared to support him. While only two were believed to be possible Medici adherents. After that, Cosimo de Medici was urgently required to return to Florence and face accountability before the assembly. Cosimo convened with fellow members of the Medici family and friends from various corners of Italy to discuss the implications of his return. Those around him strongly advised against going back, fearing that the Albizzi family could go to extreme lengths, even issuing a death sentence for Cosimo. Despite the concerns, on September 4, 1433, Cosimo de' Medici made his way back to Florence to confront the Signoria. After one day, he entered the Palazzo della Signoria to face trial. Guided by officials, he was led to the cell where he would stay until the trial season commenced. In this cell, he remained secluded without any contact until September 7th. On September 7th, the enormous vaca bell at the Palazzo rang out with great force, announcing the commencement of the trial season to the citizens. Despite Rinaldo degli Albizzi's near total control over the government, he couldn't secure a death sentence for Cosimo de' Medici from the court due to fear of the Medici family's connections in Rome. Throughout this period, other members of the Medici family, especially his brother Lorenzo, remained on high alert. After nearly a month of political turmoil in the city, on September 26th, the verdict was announced. According to the decision, Cosimo de' Medici was exiled to Padua for 10 years, his cousin Alverardo was sent to Naples for 10 years, and his brother Lorenzo was dispatched to Venice for 5 years. The entire Medici family was compelled to withdraw to Grandi, and all of their commercial enterprises within Florence were seized by the state. Cosimo spent time with his family in Padua, engaging in philosophical and artistic debates with the city's prominent intellectuals. Amidst all these pleasant days, he also stayed informed about the news from Florence. Friends of the Medici family from Florence occasionally visited Padua, bringing information about the current political situation in Florence. Cosimo was confident that the Albizzi family's tyranny would gradually lose its popularity. In his view, maintaining control required fairness rather than harshness. After a year, Cosimo's correctness started to become evident. The Albizzi family was struggling to govern Florence. Prices had risen, and discontent was being voiced from various parts of the country. Sourcing external funds became nearly impossible, and no bankers within Florence could provide financial support to the state. As a result of all these complications, a new election was held within the Signoria, and a significant number of supporters of the Medici family were elected. Consequently, Rinaldo degli Albizzi assembled a large military force, initiated plans for an uprising against the Signoria, and by September 25th, his troops were stationed near the Signoria. However, the Signoria was not unprepared. Hundreds of individuals, including troops from the Medici family, were ready to defend it. Realizing that he couldn't easily take over the Signoria, Rinaldo withdrew his forces to the piazza and managed to capture it. Chaos reigned within the city. Pope Eugenius IV feared a potential civil war in Florence that could spread to other Italian states. As a result, the Pope intervened, convincing Rinaldo to step back from his actions and abandon his plans. Pope's decision not to support Rinaldo Albizzi had one main reason. Rome's need for cash that Cosimo could meet if the Medici family established dominance in Florence. As a result, the Albizzi family left Florence and the Signoria revoked the Medici family's exile. Cosimo de' Medici left Padua and set out for Florence. Meanwhile, Medici supporters in Florence, upon learning of Cosimo's return, eagerly awaited his arrival in the city's streets with excitement. He entered through a small gate near Bargello. The time of his entry was deliberately set for nighttime, allowing Cosimo to slip into Palazzo della Signoria without drawing too much attention. He spent the night in a specially prepared chamber. In celebration of this significant victory, the next day, the Pope paid a visit to Cosimo in his private chamber, expressing gratitude for all that had been achieved. The Pope was genuinely pleased with the oasting of the Albizzi family, 
and the Medici's assumption of control over Florence, as under the Albizi rule, the funds that could not be supplied by bankers were now readily available under the Medici rule. The Medici family's success in banking and their business practices spread throughout Italy were evident to all. The first action taken by the Medici supporting Signoria was to banish Rinaldo degli Albizzi and his children from Florence and confiscate their belongings. As a result of these events, the authority of the Medici family in Florence became firmly established. The oppressive rule established by Rinaldo degli Albizzi was destroyed. While Florence was not a monarchy, Cosimo de' Medici had become similar to king. In fact, towards the later years of Cosimo's rule, this authority became even more strengthened after the Ottoman Emperor's conquest of the Eastern Roman Empire in 1453. Pope Eugenius III feared the continuous expansion of the Ottoman Empire in the East and called upon all the Italian states for a Christian attack. As a result, the various Italian states which had been in conflict for centuries were somehow set into motion. However, the Pope's call required a series of economic processes. This led to increased taxes in the Italian states and the negative effects caused by the fall of the Eastern Roman Empire in the markets drove prices up. There was a continuous increase in prices affecting all classes, especially the poor. The popularity of the Medici family among the citizens of Florence truly began during this period. During these challenging times, with the assistance of other branches of their bank, the Medici family flooded Florence with cash. Cosimo de' Medici spared no effort in spending money for the people of Florence and opened the treasury to its fullest extent. The poor were fed, struggling traders received cash support, and even when the Pope declared preparations against the Turks, Cosimo de' Medici was among the first to respond to the Pope's call for loans. With the death of the Pope, the Holy Crusade against the Ottoman Sultan did not materialize but it initiated a short period of peace among the Italian states. During this time, the Medici family's banking activities spread throughout Europe, and thus the journey that began with Giovanni de' Medici took shape with Cosimo de' Medici, leading to the birth of a family that would wield significant influence in Europe for 300 years.